Okay, so we've spoken about the game kit in terms of beginners, but what's in there for intermediate users? Well, there's some great shaders in there, if I do say so myself. <laughs> uh, no, not really. Uh, there's an eye shader in there, which is really great for um, cartoon-like, stylized characters. And it uses uh, parallax, genuine parallax occlusion to make the iris sync into the back of the eyeball. It uses some subsurface scattering to show the blood vessels in the sclera. Um, it's quite fun, yeah. Uh, sadly, you don't often get close enough to her eyes to see it. Oh well. Uh, we've also got a really nice hair shader in there, which uses uh, anisotropic shading. And that basically that means uh, from different light angles, you'll get a different uh, kind of reflection. Makes it. Basically, sort of stretches the highlights in one direction, yeah. yeah. But and then as you turn it, you'll see the highlights change and shrink again, yeah. like hair does. Yeah, and we've got a, a reasonable skin shader on there for stylized characters, which also has subsurface scattering. And we've got a very nice plant shader, which uses vertex colors to animate the uh, plant in different ways, scaling and. Uh, translation and it has subsurface scattering too. So that's really good for like wiggly fronds of grass or yeah. Yeah. you can make the trees sway and things like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Or um, pulsing kind of it pick up alien animation yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Good fun. Uh, and there's also the water shader which is uh, very interesting. Uh, it does um, the first thing you'll notice is that it has shadows on it which hasn't been um, done very well before. It's probably still not done very well, but we had a good go at it. And you can um, uh, you can see that we implemented it using a custom shadow collector, um, which means we can then save the shadow texture and use it for inside our water shader. Uh, it does depth-based fog, depth-based blurring. Uh, it has normals, which ripple across the surface and you'll notice that it's very hard to see any tiling artifacts in the water because we slightly perturb the UV coordinates across the mesh which makes it um, less noticeable and more seamless mm. the ripples That's cool. yeah. and there's one other thing, ah oh, yeah, real time reflections okay, reflections are really good and of course you'll notice there's lots of scum on the surface of the water and we implemented that using poly brush to paint the vertex colors, which we then interpolate the scum texture into the water. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mildly proud of that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's such modesty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a few other fun uh, shaders that we've been using in there as well, which might be nice for intermediates to dig through. Um, there's some nice examples of uh, kind of world space UVing and triplanar yeah. texturing to a certain degree. So what that means is we have rocks uh, we've got a moss growing over the top throughout a level. Um, what this means is you can actually rotate the rock any way you want and the moss will always stay on top. So you get loads and loads of variations out of the same asset just by rotating it round and you mm. get a little bit of moss growing over it. Yeah, um, and of course if you change your texture to snow yeah. you'll, or anything else that you want to sit on top of your rock, it's, it's a really great technique. Yeah, yeah, snow's a great example for that. It's the perfect kind of laying on top of everything regardless of how you spin it kind yeah. of example. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there was a custom shader that we used with the poly brush floors that we made as well. I kind of briefly talked about that earlier, but you can look through that and swap out any textures or materials you want. We've got, kind of got a multi-material mixer there, so um, you can see it quite clearly in the first level where you've got kind of grass kind of blending into mud and then there's little puddles there. Those have all been kind of manually painted in. Uh, so you can get these really beautiful kind of varied textures across like large surfaces, which is one thing that's always been quite tricky to do well in Unity, I'd say, so that's a good example of that one. Hmm. There's a nice shader on the chomper too. If you look closely, you can see his insides. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> I always thing. forget about that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a bit hard to see. Yeah, you can see his little heart beating yeah. through yeah. his translucent skin. Yeah, cool. so that's, that was a bit of fun to make too. Yeah. When you kill him and he dissolves, his heart is the last part that evaporates. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of nice little touches like that as well like um, the chompers have uh, a ragdoll that is activated so a ragdoll is letting the physics system take over mm -hmm. the 
the kind of skeleton system of the character. Sort of just flop away. Yeah, and get that them. really fun kind of floppy thing that happens in games. Uh, and then he dissolves away of a shader and there's some particle effects that, mm. that kick off there. And um, there's a lot of really nice particle examples in there as well, which you can just rip out and use for any game you want. Um, there's a few of those who are using the new standard particle shader. Mm -hmm. um, the standard particle shader is a, a f relatively new or maybe even brand new. This is one of the problems of working so long in beta software. I can't remember when things come out anymore. <laughs> so it could be brand new. Um, the standard particle shader is a, a kind of extended version of the particle shader to make it a little bit more like the uh, standard shaders that we're used to using in Unity. Uh, so they've got a lot of extra features like blend modes, um, you can have like albedo, specular, you can now have kind of normal maps uh, and various distortion effects. Um, one place to see them is at the end of our second level. Uh, if you find the dropship, it's got its engines running and it's got this heat haze and the heat haze is just a normal map running through the distortion. And it creates this beautiful refractive effect that would have been really difficult to do before. So some really nice examples of new kind of particle features. Um, there's new orbit particles, uh, which are a fairly new feature as well. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if you see things like the collectibles might have like spinning particles orbiting around them with like particle trails and other nice little effects so so every effect's worth looking at because i think everyone's doing kind of something interesting and different with some of the new particle system features and so for intermediate users who are a bit more interested in the programming side of things simon tell us more about these interesting editor scripts that you have in there okay so basically an editor script is something that uh, you can usually see in the scene view or in the inspector um, and they're very easy to do and to hook up into existing gameplay scripts. So for instance on the Chompers we have uh, an editor script which shows a gizmo which is the uh, the radius or the arc that it can that it will respond to intrusions into its space in. Mm -hmm. So you know that when you sneak up behind it, it you can knock him on the head but if you go into that radius his AI will activate and will come and he'll turn around and attack you. Um, so they're, they're just really just using gizmos to visualize properties on those particular objects. Um, some of the other editor scripts, like if you look at the pressure pad, for instance, it has a bunch of send command type um, components on it. And they're, they're using um, gizmos to show where they're connected to to other objects in the scene. Mm. But of course you can then select the other object because its gizmo is also shown and jump straight to that object. So it's really facilitating uh, designers uh, having an easy time to build these games. And if I talk about the components themselves, it's not really specific to the editor, but those sorts of components are very useful and good examples of uh, allowing a designer to do whatever they like while the programmer still has control over what's going on. right? So he can assign an audio source into one of those components mm -hmm. and then it will it will be triggered. But of course if he doesn't assign the audio source it will not get triggered. But then when it comes to gameplay you don't want things to always happen straight away. So he can say I actually want to trigger this one second later. So he can dial in a little number that fits his game and the, the actions will will happen without programmers having to write that code uh, at that time frame. If you want something to only happen once, it's just a checkbox. So we've got these general kind of gameplay components which allow the inspector to be used as a programming tool uh, for building the gameplay by designers or programmers who have put on their designer hat. Well, thanks for joining us today. It's been great to have you. And if you want to get started with the 3D Game Kit, you can download it from the Asset Store now. And you can also find the tutorials on unity3d.com forward slash learn. Check it out. Thank you.